Hi, uh, welcome to another PhotoLink video. Uh, this one is going to be on HDR generation um, and, and tone mapping with uh, QTP FSGUI. This uh, program probably has um, the worst name of any program I've ever heard of. Nobody can ever remember the name, but it's um, a, a software with uh, pretty um, elegant uh, functionality. Um, as we install it, what you have to do is it comes both as a set of D, D, or DLLs and also a uh, program that's downloaded. You have to install them both in the same directory. Um, in the uh, website for QTP FSGUI, um, it contains download instructions, so we won't go into those too, too much. Um, I've, I've launched the program at this point. And uh, what we get is we get um, a menu bar at the top. And uh, the menu bar basically is um, uh, a new HDR, um, open an HDR. Okay, you can save the HDR, save the HDR preview. Um, you can exit, and here are a number of the last uh, programs that we've um, dealt with, the HDRs that we've dealt with. Once it's loaded, you can rotate it. You can rotate or rotate the HDR. Um, you can do projective transformations. More about those later. Uh, resize the HDR. Tone map the HDR. You can view it. And those are basically fit to window, uh, normal size, zoom out, zoom in, uh, HDR histogram, um, the toolbars that are available, which um, you can see right here. You can have icons only, text alongside the icons. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you can have preferences, copy EXIF data, uh, batch tone mapping, uh, normal window operations, and help. Uh, what you need to do is, if all possible, go into the documentation. And the documentation um, is fairly complete. And um, what you can uh, do is explore that at that point. Uh, just for a side point, QTPFSGUI, basically QT is the uh, language that is utilized. PFS um, is the um, functionality that's been implemented through that language. And GUI is uh, the uh, interface, the uh, Windows interface. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to just generate a GUI from three images that we've selected previously. This is going to be a several uh, tutorials long, so um, we're going to uh, deal with other things in more detail. But anyway, so if I click on File, and if I say New HDR, um, I have a button here that says Load Images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this image. There are three TIFs, and I'm going to open them. This takes a second, a few seconds. Now it's loading the first image. It's loading the second image. Now it's load the third. Now, it will normally pull out the exposure data from the EXIF data in, um, if, if it's present. Uh, here it is not present. So we click on you know each uh, individual exposure value. Now what I've done is I've saved these. Uh, this um, underexposed TIF. They're all the same image, but this one is uh, two EVs uh, underexposed. This is normal exposed, and this is two EVs overexposed. So I'm going to come over to here, and since this is underexposed by two EVs, I'm going to put a minus two. In the normal exposure, I'm going to indicate this as being spot on, or zero EVs. And on the overexposed, I'm going to put this as two EVs. Now, <coughs> this will auto-align the images if they're taken not off a tripod, or even if they're taken on a tripod. You can auto-align uh, auto the three separate images. Uh, more about that later, but we're going to leave that off. We're going to go into our next window. Uh, these basically are not very well documented, so I leave them alone. And I just click Finish. 
And what it's going to do is combine uh, those three images into a uh, HDR. This is going to take a second. And it's working away on it. Okay, here is our HDR. Now, I can go into the view options and I can say, uh, fit this to the window. Okay, there is our HDR of a plane that was taken uh, down the street. Uh, basically, what I can do at this point is um, we have a small histogram here. Now, the histogram and the gamma do not make any changes to the HDR. Uh, what they do is they just allow you to change it for viewing purposes on the screen. Uh, the HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range, um, has now been generated. And what we're going to do for the next video is we're going to come up here and we're going to save this HDR as. Okay, and we're going to call it um, Video uh, Tutorial. And we can save this as an E. EXR. So we've now saved that um, 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 HDR. And it's saving. Okay. We're going to stop the video at this point. This is the end of the first video on QTPF. S G U I, and we're going to pick up the video in a moment um, on, on the second part, and we're going to talk about uh, the video and some of the things that we can do with it. Well, thank you for watching, and um, we'll see you in a few minutes.